Hello and welcome to God's Friends. I'm Gary Gaither. And I'm Sue Gaither. Welcome. Sue, did you know that God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ? By grace we've been saved. And he raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace, we have been saved through faith. And that not of ourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. What a way to begin, Ephesians 2. Amen, I love that, I love that. And I was thinking this morning, that may God enable us by the power of his spirit not to skip the meaning, the deep, deep, precious truth of what you just read and also the gift of righteousness that God has given us in his son. But it's, it's more than just some label that God puts in you. Uh, or on you okay righteous now you can get into heaven it's so much more than that with our our faith in the gospel of what God did in his son on that cross and in the resurrection comes the Holy Spirit the spirit of righteousness comes to quicken us make us alive as you just read Gary and then he takes a permanent residence in us, the temple, the body, the spirit man, um, all of us, spirit, soul, and body, and then lead us. How? By his life. The very life that he quickened us with is the very life that not only we are saved by, but it's the life we live by. And see, I love that because the spirit in us is the one who wants to drive this home in deep reality so that we walk it out. And I was really thinking about that today. I said, oh God, we don't need to skip the depths of what it means to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And, and you and I want to talk about that today. And I... In doing so, I just, for myself, I just went over Romans 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 again with the Lord. And if we learn to do that too, that you're living in his unending presence. Because you're in Christ and Christ is in you, there is no time when his presence is not there. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Well, what does that mean? It means he's there. And so I talk to him. You talk to him. We live in him. We move in him. We have our being in him. And therefore, when I pick up the Bible, he and I are in it together. And I said, okay, Lord, uh, what it, you know, make that richer in me. Paul wrote to let the words of Christ dwell in you richly. So that you're able to exhort and teach and admonish and build another brother and sister up in Christ. Because what you're doing, you're speaking out of your own heart. You're saying, hey, this is what the Lord keeps teaching me and showing me and enriching in my life. And, and I want to encourage <coughs> you, brother, that yes, God wants to do the same thing. Across the board, in every child of God's See, life. that sounds like you're having fun in the morning. Amen. I had fun this morning. I just woke up and You know, and I think that's is. so often that's the missing element in our devotional life is, is that flat out enjoyment of the God who called us with an everlasting love. You know, I, I think as his children, we are called to enjoy him because I know he enjoys us. The word is full of it, you know. How much, how much God enjoys his children. And I've seen you times when, when 
you uh, you get up early and you spend this time and you got your little notebook, you know, and you're writing away in your notebook and having fellowship with God. And there is a real joy on your face as you spend that that quiet time with Him. Well, can and, I insert this real mm-hmm, quick? Mm-hmm. It wasn't always that no, way. I know it's just a process. It takes <laughs> yeah, a while. It wasn't yeah, always that well, way. You know, when we start reading the Word as young Christians, it, boy, it's an ought, and it's like, how do I get through this? We had someone ask us yesterday. Who's, who's kind of on the the edge of uh, Christianity is what? Well, what version do I read? Well, you know, it, that started a whole conversation because you could tell it was just hard, difficult, painful for her to open the Word, and that's kind of how most most of us start until we discover that it's a love letter, that it's really music to our ears and life to our heart. And a lot of people don't know how to read the Bible. You know, they think they have to start on page one and and go through it. Well, I'm sorry, it's not a novel. It's not a history book. It's a love letter, and you do not start on page one necessarily. Most people start in the Gospel of John and and, and get familiar with the New Testament first. So, uh, it, it, listener, enjoy your enjoy your Lord. Well, may enjoy I read your a, life with Him. May I read a scripture that I I would really love to hang this program on today um, if we if the Lord leads us that way but it's found in Romans 517 for if by the one man's offense and who is he talking about he's talking about Adam that through Adam sin and death spread to all man men you can find that in Romans 5 he said okay so if by one man's offense, death reigned through the one. Much more, and I love those two words, much more. Those who receive, those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one. Jesus Christ. This verse means so much to me because it, it's like a centerpiece for uh, Romans 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. It's sitting right in the middle of it. It ties in so nicely with our, with our opening from Ephesians 2. Um, I'm guilty of not pondering this enough, but you know this phrase, and he says, he raised us up together and made us sit together. Now that's fellowship. That's what we were just talking about with you, with you and, and the Lord in the mornings. Sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus with man. Now, the, now places is in, in italics, meaning it's not in the original language. But but God wants us to sit together. He wants us to have fellowship. And and when we fellowship with Him in spirit, we're seated with Him in the heavenlies, because that's where God is. So we're with him, we're where he is. And and to look forward that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. You know, that's back to God's friends again. If you understand that you are his, his dearly beloved, his friend, as Jesus described at the Last Supper, then, then we look forward to discovering Forever, the increasing understanding of the kindness God has in Christ Jesus for us. I, I just have this burden, Sue, and I know you do too, to get Christian people out of religion into a satisfying relationship with Jesus Christ. And have that basis for why we have this relationship. And, and I go back to Romans 4 and... And just to put it in a very simple analogy, Gary, is that this gift of righteousness is also the person of righteousness, Jesus in us, Christ in us, through his spirit. And look at it like an account. Um, This is God's account. And in this account is his son. And in his son is all purity, righteousness, holiness, wisdom, knowledge, everything is in this account. So Romans 4 talks about that basically God is 
crediting this account to you when you believe in him, when you believe that when God says, hey, I sent my son, he died on the cross, for this purpose he came, save the world from sin and death, to give them eternal life, to forgive them all their lawless deeds, as it says also in Romans 4, and to live with him, rule and reign with him forever, and do what you just read in uh, Ephesians about that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Okay, that's that's the account. So think about it. He's telling us that the way in is the way on. You don't start coming up with a new system of how to walk this out. If it's if it started with grace, it's all grace, all the way through grace, through faith. And you're trusting in Christ, in this person. Well, does that mean that he's also going to teach me how he works it out in my walk on this planet? Yes, it's that too. But it's all him. So if you take two people <coughs> and they're both in Christ, and let's say one of them, Gary, uh gives a zillion dollars and another guy gives ten dollars and you oh you the human wants to compare we want to compare our works we want to compare our talents we want to compare our looks we want to compare how much money we have or don't how much money you have how much this you have and it you uh, you cannot add anything to God's account or take away from it because it's all in his son and it's his account that he is credited to you so it's the spirit in me he teaches me what Paul said in Galatians 2 20 the life I now live and just for the sake of picture and analogy I live by his account I live by his life. I live by the spirit of life in me, in Christ Jesus. No other way. And this is what the Lord wants to teach us and drive home in us because it's none other but joy and peace to the believer because he's saying, oh, this is a relationship. Back to what you just said. Oh, this is abiding. Oh, this is looking to you, Jesus, all the time about everything. So I want to share something that one of my mentors uh, wrote many, many years ago. And a listener, I hope that you listen with your spirit because this is different from what you expect and what you've normally seen exhibited so often in the church. A life in the spirit is bound to have one hallmark, and that is the nature of God is reproduced, reproduced in the personality handed over to him. For such a handing over implies total immersion in and possession by the Spirit of God. So we can be made like God himself. God's nature has one essential characteristic. God is always totally self-giving. He pours himself out in an everlasting stream of blessing on all his creation. He is the eternal will to all goodness. He finds himself in losing himself. Do we find ourselves in losing ourselves? It brings to mind many of the words of Christ, doesn't it? Now, if that spirit indwells in me, he, the spirit, must necessarily turn me in a similar direction. The spirit that took the Savior to Calvary for the world and drove Christ to offer himself without spot unto God, if that's in quotes, don't take it too far, uh, must drive, drive me drive me out of self-pleasing into self-giving, out of indulgence into sacrifice, out of security into service. That, that's what I've struggled with much over the years, out of care for or myself into concern for others. This drive, incidentally, is the glory of the gospel. 
It means we do, listen to this, listener, let this encourage you. It means that we do not tell the unwilling, the fearful, the self-pleasing, the soft, which we all are by nature, to do this or be that for God, to deny themselves, to give up things, to endure hardship, which they cannot and do not want to do. We bid them only to do one thing, to acknowledge frankly all weakness and all unwillingness, just acknowledge it, and to commit ourselves to the control of God's Holy Spirit. That's it. So That's are you? It. You're, when I hear it saying, and you're saying, this is about the contents in the vessel and the joy of the fact that he came to live there and is. When Paul wrote, he said, Christ is all. He's all and in you all. He was saying a beautiful reality. And with that, what you just read, and just to think about what's been said so far, I, I'd like to share a song that is the hallmark of what you just said about being his and yielding to him and trusting him with your life, with your whole being. Yes. You know, Gary, the, here's the one question we all need to ask. Can I, can you trust him to do it? Can you trust God to do it all? Can you trust the Lord living in you to bring forth that fruit that he has promised through his spirit in you? Can you trust him? Meaning, I can let go of any other scheme, any other plan to come up to be something or do something for God on my own and my own thinking and really trust God's word and what he said about his son, who his son is in us and who we are in him and let go of all of that and say, yes, your your born again spirit by nature says yes you can believe 
because he's given us the measure of faith. It's faith that is even of him. Because did Jesus ever once not trust God? No. He trusted God all the way through, even through the cross. He trusted God. Even the psalmist wrote that years in a prophetic statement. He trusted in God that he would deliver him. He entrusted himself to him who judges righteously and that he would raise him from the dead. That was the plan. Because he said in his earthly ministry, he said, I will raise, be raised up on the third day. He, he said, I have finished the work that God has given me to do. He said that in his prayer in John 17. So he was saying, I, I'm doing the cross. I, I have finished the work. That's just, that is marvelous. So the question and the answer is, can we trust God and God alone? Can we trust Jesus in us? Can we trust his Holy Spirit in us? Can we trust God's word the way he laid it out for us? And the answer, amen, is yes, yes, and amen. Yeah, I'll quote that again. We, you know, we, we tell people the unwilling, the fearful, the self-pleasing, the soft, which we all are, not to deny things, give things up, endure hardship, work real hard, you know, that's a result that's not a cause. So if we start pushing on, that, on a rope, all we're going to have is a mess in front of us. I think we get this backwards. I know I have in my life so often. You know, we, we don't have to be pushed. We, we bid ourselves and one another to do one thing. Admit it. Admit that we are weak and unwilling and selfish and shallow and, and, and carnal and pleasure-loving and pain-hating and, and man-pleasing. And, but at the same time, to commit ourselves to the control of God's Spirit. And then he begins that process that theologians, theologians call sanctification or being set apart for the Lord in, in our life. And, it, and it's a process. It takes a while. Yeah, obviously, but the reason so many people are offended at Christians is they look at baby Christians and they still act like the world. They're still selfish and prideful and hostile and arrogant and angry and all those things because they haven't progressed yet. And so often... We are told we have to do this and we have to do that. And so we reach into our own nature and try to do that, which by nature it's impossible for us to do. And so we live the the, rinse, repeat. We go through that cycle so often. And some Christians get stuck in it for decades, trying to perform and being frustrated and, and, and people looking at them and going, if that's a Christian, I, I, don't, I don't want what they've got. And we give a poor testimony because our eyes are on the wrong thing. Our eyes are on ourself and our performance rather than our eyes being on our lover. Set your mind on things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden in Christ with God. And, and part of the problem, Gary, I, I believe this because I look back on my life is it's just not being taught the true gospel and what happened to us and how that we are to do this the way God laid it out in his word. And you just described flesh apart from Christ himself. But if you, if you describe Christ and who he is and who he made us to be in him. Going back to that account, you can't find selfishness and ugliness and pride in Jesus' account. No. You won't find that there. And that's why he wants to teach us to live through his life and abiding in his life in us because it is his life that we were saved by and it is his life that we live by, that we walk by. And and that's the very thing the Spirit of God wants to show us and reveal to us. And then we, we can be at rest. We can say, I'm not going to look at myself and say, oh, you're, 
you know, you could do that every day and say, oh, you didn't perform well today. No, he wants us to have our faith level rise and say, let's look at what Jesus can accomplish in us and the work and the fruit that he can bring. That's the point is I'm, that's how we look at Jesus. And, and we need to be, hear this. We need to proclaim it so that people understand, look at him, look at him, look at him, not you without him. And so we, we learn these things, that pro, uh, progression you were talking about is also learning the truth and learning Christ, because Paul talked about that in Colossians. And, and this is why as we learn, we proclaim. As we are convinced by the Lord and persuaded by him, we proclaim to encourage, to edify my brother and sister. Yeah, he's been teaching me the true way of the Lord. Amen. You know, that's what's meant by that that phrase, be still and know that I am God. It doesn't say be busy and work to improve yourself. It says be still and know that I am God. There is such a, a, a peace in allowing Christ by his spirit to rule our lives. And yes, we do things, get things done spiritually, but it's because he is doing it and our inner man is at rest letting him express his life. So, you know, that's why we, we like to repeat these things. You know, listener, find somebody you can talk about Christ with, not how much information you've built up, not all the theolo- theological things and all the prophetic and eschatology and, and, and all the history. And, and there's, there's a purpose in that. But God calls us into relationship. We need to share that living relationship with the Lord and with each other and recognize the last thing Christ said on the cross as he took his last breath was tetelestai, it is finished. Listener, you don't have to finish it. You just have to rest in him finishing it and his work as we have that one hallmark, the nature of God being reproduced in our personality by the indwelling Holy Spirit of God. And one last comment is before we close out our program is I believe it's, it's just totally fine to show up to God's throne and say, God, I'm not sure I really understand this or that, or I don't know how you want to live through me, but I sure want you, you to teach me and show me and reveal it to me. And he loves that. He will. Thank you so much for joining us today on God's Friends with Gary and Sue Gaither. And we invite you to join us again as we share the unfathomable riches of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And you can find us on YouTube, Gary and Sue Gaither.